How many of you have ever been told there is no such thing as a free lunch? <laughs> Nobody? What? Who are you? You've never heard that? There's no such thing as a free lunch? How about this? Y'all are raising your hands because you're the quiet crowd. How about this? How many of you have ever been told anything you ever want in life, you've got to work for it? Yep, yep. And you live your life according to that plan, don't you? <clears throat> and to be honest, in the world that we live in, I wouldn't trust anybody told me something was free. Y'all have have y'all seen the commercial where the guy's in Vegas and he's calling back to his wife and he says, Man, Vegas is great. They've given me a free room only because I'm down fifty eight hundred bucks. <laughs> I like that there's two of them out now. This one says fifty eight hundred dollars and she says fifty eight hundred dollars and he says, Yeah, but in Vegas that's like one dollar. And she says, Yeah, here it's like six grand. <laughs> so but he truly believes, hey, man, they're giving me a free hotel room. This is amazing. In our world today, you can't trust anybody that says you're going to get something for free. How many times do you see on the television, if you happen to sell cell phones, you know, don't get offended, but you might as well. <laughs> hey, free cell phone with a 19-year contract. You know what I'm saying? And they get you stuck in these contracts just like anything else in the world. Free one of these as long as you pay us every month for the rest of your entire life. But this thing is free. We got direct TV at my house, and they gave us the, the TV, oh, TV, whatever the thing is, the recording thing. That's all free, baby. All free. For a $9 million contract I got signed with them. But I got that thing for free. In our world today, you can't look at anybody and trust them when they say something's really free anymore. You know, no strings attached. You ever see that one? You know, we'll give, you get these things in the mail all the time. All you got to do is send this in and we'll give you whatever. No strings attached. Nothing on your part. We just want to give you stuff. How many people in our world today do you really believe just want to give you something? About zero. Nobody's going to give you something for free without something being attached to it. That's just the way it is these days. And sadly, that's the way it is in everywhere. People see that in churches. People see that in every relationship, in their businesses. Everybody wants something for themselves. But what we have learned here, if you've learned anything at Excel, one thing that you have learned probably is that we can't take what we learn in the world and relate it to our relationship with Jesus. Because when you add Jesus in, it changes all the rules. And when you add Jesus into the mix, it changes everything that you have to see and everything that you have to feel about that situation. Because you can tell me, hey, I'll give you something for free all day, but until Jesus jumps in the mix, I don't care what you have to say for free. And that's the way we are in this world. But we have been grown and raised to understand that everything you get in life, you should work for. You shouldn't even take anything for free. When I moved here, um, somebody gave me a gift at one point, and my dad called me. He's like, now, what do they want from you for that? I'm like, uh, Dad, that's why it's a gift. They don't want anything. Oh, you better be careful. And that's just because of who he is. He's been doing business forever. You don't trust anybody in our world today. And what I've learned over the years and, and what we have learned here at Excel is until you put Jesus in the middle of it, it doesn't matter. But what we're hearing is we can't relate what we learn in our world today to our relationship with Christ. Because once you put Christ in it, everything in the situation changes. I've kept the band up here because I want them to do one more song by Audio Slave called Cochise. And we've done it here before, but I want you to listen to the words of it. And I'm going to show you how that relates to us, even in our spiritual lives. So I'll be right back. Go on and save yourself and take it out on me. That's what Jesus tells us. And that's just another, we do that all the time here at, at XL. <clears throat> that's a radio, a song you'll hear on your radio. Normal, everyday, whatever music, but that can come with a message that says, go and save yourself and take it all out on me. Do you know that that is the message that Jesus Christ brings to you in his word? Give your life over to me. Save yourself and I'll take all the pain. Let me read the, the lyrics to that song one more time. Well, I've been watching while you've been coughing. 
I've been drinking life while you've been nauseous, and so I drink to health while you kill yourself, and I got just one thing that I can offer. <clears throat> Go on and save yourself and take it out on me. Because I want you to understand the whole purpose for this free lunch series is so you get this point right here. Jesus Christ offers you salvation for absolutely free. No cost to you. Nothing you have to do. Nothing you have to work for. It's free. He says anybody that calls on his name will be saved. By definition, saved, that whole concept is when you give your life to Christ, he promises you eternal life with the creator of the universe forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. For free. But see, we have been trained that that's not possible. We have been taught for years that without question, you have to do something for God for him to do something for you. You've heard the scripture quoted that says God only helps those who help themselves. You've never actually read it. You've heard it quoted. It's not in there, but you've heard it quoted. The truth is God says to you and to me, I will give you the gift of salvation. And all you got to do is accept it. Jerry, that's not even right. That's not even possible. Nobody gives anything away for free anymore. You know what? That's true. You're exactly right. Nobody gives you anything for free these days. But Jesus does. And I want to explain to you just a little bit of where we, how we got to where we are today. Especially if you go to church other places or you've grown up in church in different places. A lot of people base a lot of things on rules and regulations, and laws, and whatever they want to call them, that God says to us, you know what, we don't live by those anymore. But we get built into this system where we are told you've got to live up to this certain standard or God won't love you. And our message tonight is that salvation is completely free. Next week you're going to hear that God's love is completely free. And there's not one thing in this world you can ever do to make him love you more or less than he does right now today. God's love for you is free to you. All you got to do is accept it. But back in the Old Testament days, they had when Moses uh, was on the mountain and God was explaining to him and he Y'all saw the movie where he gave him the Ten Commandments, wrote them on big stones, and he brought them down, and, and you've seen the whole movie thing, so you know how that works. <clears throat> but he gave him commands, and then he gave him laws, all with the, all of his people, and he gave them laws and commands for a couple of reasons. One was how we should live our lives. He taught them. Ten Commandments. You've read them. You've heard of them. You've seen them in the movies. You've seen them on walls sometimes. Ten Commandments of how you should live your life. And then along with that came a lot of laws that were there specifically on how we are supposed to deal with sin in our lives. And I want to walk through some of the things that they had to go through. And here's just an example of some of the, the laws that they had to work through. Here's an example out of the book of Numbers. It says this, all of you who have killed anyone, they had gone off to battle. And they were coming home and it says, all of you have killed anyone <clears throat> or touched anyone who was killed must stay outside the camp seven days. On the third and seventh days, you must purify yourselves and your captives. Purify every garment as wool as everything, you made, everything made of leather, goat, hair, or wood. Then Eliezer the priest said to the soldiers who had gone into battle, this is the requirement of the law that the Lord gave Moses. Gold, silver, bronze, iron, tin, lead, and anything else that can withstand fire must be put through the fire, and then it will be clean. But it must also be purified with the water of cleansing, and whatever cannot withstand fire must be put through water. On the seventh day, wash your clothes and you will be clean. Then you can come into the camp. Guys, those are just the standards to get back into your home when you come home from battle. They literally had hundreds of laws that you had to live by because of the sin that they had in their lives. And they were constantly having to work through these laws and these procedures in order to cleanse themselves. 
And I know this is a little bit different than the way we usually talk here at XL, and the message is a little bit different tonight, but the truth is you need to understand where all this stuff comes from. Because there are still people that live today thinking that we've got to perform acts of whatever to be clean before God. And we have to do all these things and this list of things that we must accomplish before we can actually talk to God. And what I want to tell you tonight is you may be sitting here and, and if you have come in here and you're already a believer in Jesus Christ and you've already given your life to him or you came in here tonight, this is your first time, you don't even know what we're about and you're just here checking this whole thing out. The message is clearly the same to both of you tonight. God's salvation is free. Stop working for it. And I say that to you because there are people in the world today that have been Christians for 50 years that still to this day are trying to work for a better salvation than what they've got. And it is time to let that go. Because it is not going to get any better the more stuff you do. These guys back here, they were reading these laws. Some other stuff, 2 Chronicles chapter 23, verse 6, is when the priest would enter the, the tabernacle, the temple, to go in and meet with God. And there was only one person that could go in there <clears throat> and it was not you or me, okay? And, and they would have to stand outside because we weren't clean probably, and the priest could go. And this is what it says, no one is to enter the temple of the Lord except the priests and Levites on duty. They may enter because they are consecrated, but all the other men are to guard what the Lord has assigned to them. Listen, what it says is, <clears throat> if you've not completely consecrated yourself, and the rules and the list of things you have to do to consecrate yourself at this time is tremendous, if you have not done that, you cannot step into the presence of the holy, almighty God. <clears throat> you just can't do it. And when you get over into the New Testament, New Testament is everything written after, <clears throat> after the time Jesus was on this earth, died on the cross, and was raised again for us. Everything after that is the New Testament. When you get to the New Testament and you begin to look, there's a group of people called the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Two different groups of people had some differences, but one thing they had in common is that they were all about the law. And they were proud of themselves being about the law. And they could find ways to follow all the laws, and they would make sure they followed all the laws, and they would make sure also that they pointed out that you were not following all the laws. That was one of the encouraging parts of them. But they were always about following every step of the law all the way through. And what happened when Jesus came on the, the, the scene is he began to mess with their philosophy. He began to explain to them that it is not about the law. It is about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that just blew their mind completely. And I mean it took them because they've never heard that before. All they've ever said was it's about the law. And if you don't follow every law, you're not going to make it. And we are more holy than even Jesus because if we follow laws he's not following. And it's about the detail of the law. And you know what? There are Christians today that are still stuck in that mindset. It is about the detail of the law. Now listen to me. The laws have changed for those people. You know, we don't have a lot of Christians today that feel like every time they sin they have to go sacrifice a bird of some kind. You know, we're not into that. But we do have people that say that, that believe in Jesus that every time they commit a sin, they spend the next six months feeling guilty about it because they can't get past it. What can I do to clean myself up enough to be okay for God? What can I do to change who I am enough that I can be clean again before God? And one of the reasons people that, that don't know Jesus don't give their lives to him these days is because none of us can be good enough. And you've, I've been told this before. I'm not going to give my life to Jesus because there's no way I could live up to what he wants. You know what? You're exactly right. And he never one time asked you to. But we have got people in our world today that have been in churches for years. And some of you sit here tonight because you couldn't live up to the standards of the regular traditional church setting. And somebody told you at one point in time, you know what? Well... If you come to our church, we're, gonna, we're a little different. We kind of expect you to do this and this, and you really need to follow our rules or you're not really welcome here. You know what? The same exact church 
would not welcome Jesus Christ if he stepped back on this earth and walked in the front doors of that building. Because you know what? He never followed a rule one. <laughs> he just didn't. And I want you to get that tonight. Because even as believers, we have people stuck. We, we had our, our series called Strongholds. This is one of the biggest strongholds in the church today is people that feel like we've got to work to be loved by our God. And we got people that have been working in the church and they're, they're all about serving in every area and they serve not because they love the Lord and not because they love being there. They serve because they feel like if they quit, it's going to cost them. And they serve because, man, God said serve one time, so I've got to do everything so I can stay in good graces with him. I can promise you, I can promise you that God is not asking you to serve him just so you can check off on some list someplace that you've done that. But we still to this day have Christians that believe with all their heart, man, I've got to do this and this and this so that I can be okay with God. And until us as believers don't, until we get that, the people sitting around us that don't know Jesus, and I know some of you here tonight, you've never met Jesus, and that's great with us because we are here for you. You are why we do what we do. And you're why we do a free lunch, to tell you how free it is. But you know what? If I'm a person that doesn't have a relationship with Christ, and I'm living and hanging out with a bunch of people that say they have a relationship with Christ, but they don't live like it's free either. How am I going to understand that? How am I supposed to get that when the long-time Christians don't even get it? But what you see from the Pharisees and Sadducees, these groups that, that had major conflict with Jesus because they were trying to keep him to follow all their laws and standards as well. But here's what I want you to see. What was the law for? We talked about that just a minute ago. It was to help us learn how to live, and then it was also to help us um, <clears throat> learn how to deal with sin. But this is what happened in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. See, what happened was Jesus came and died on the cross for us, right? Y'all remember that story? When he did that, this is what he says about that. He says this, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I didn't come to get rid of all those laws. I came to fulfill all those laws. What does that mean, Jared? Here's, here's the example. <clears throat> you get a speeding ticket on the way home tonight. You're going, you know, 700 miles an hour. It costs you 500 bucks for your ticket because you're really going fast. And you go to court tomorrow and you got the judge that's, you know, going to make you pay without question. And somebody, you're standing up there and you're about to write your check for 500 bucks. And Ken Oates back here meets you there and he steps up and he pays... $500 for your ticket. I want you to understand something. He didn't walk in and say to the judge, listen, judge, this is a good guy. You shouldn't charge him 500 bucks. Let's just let this one go. He didn't do that. He paid it so you would be okay. He didn't take away the speeding fine. He didn't take away the law that says you shouldn't have been going that fast in the first place. He paid for your wrong. He didn't go in and justify the fact that, you know what, you had to get somewhere. You had to be someplace, so you needed to be going 700 miles an hour. He didn't do that. He paid it because you messed up. And what Jesus says when he says, I didn't come to get rid of all the law. I came to take care of the law. God's rule is very clearly this. From the point where Adam and Eve were in the garden all the way to today, every time somebody sins, something had to die. That was his standard. And all of those laws and rules and regulations in the Old Testament were something was being sacrificed to take care of people's sin. Something had to die so you could get in the presence of God. And what Jesus did when he climbed up on that cross and died that day, he didn't say, you know what, guys, I'm getting rid of all the law. He didn't do that. He said, you know what, guys? I am becoming the ultimate sacrifice. Because I'm not changing the law to where you people have not messed up. I'm covering it because you have messed up. I'm not getting rid of it all. I'm fulfilling it all. Because that's what I'm capable of doing. 
And when Jesus Christ climbed up on that cross and died for me and you, he gave you an opportunity to spend eternity with him. Because here's the deal, when you don't spend eternity with God, that's eternal separation from God, that's death. That's spiritual death. And if you die and you leave this planet and you go someplace without a relationship with Jesus Christ, you spend eternity experiencing death. But what God did when he put his son on the cross for me and you is he said very clearly, Jared, for you I sent my son so that you could have life. Josh, for you I sent my son so that you could have life. Nick, for you I sent my son so that you could have life. Accept that. And he stepped up in front of that judge and paid your ticket. He didn't come to say that there doesn't need to be death. He came to be that death for you. So that you and I could have life with him. And what do we do with that? We continue to work for it. There's no difference in you going back to the judge the next day and saying... Uh, Your Honor, I know they paid my ticket. Ken Oates came and paid my ticket yesterday, but I want to go ahead and give you 100 bucks today. I want to continue to pay you from now until I die. Every month I want to give you $100 because I feel like I still owe you something. You know what? That's where we are as believers a lot of times. Once we give our lives to Jesus and he says, you know what? You are clean and pure before me. We say, thank you, Jesus. Now what can I do to be clean and pure? And he says... I told you, you are clean and pure. I made you that way. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Now, what can I do to be more clean and pure? And he says, what are we doing? Clean the air filter. Great. We probably do need to clean that, by the way. (laughs) What do we do? What do we do when we say that? Hey, Ken Oates, thanks for paying my ticket, but your money ain't worth all that, so I'm going to go ahead and keep paying. Hey, Jesus, thanks for climbing up on a cross and dying for me, but you didn't really cover it all, so I'm going to go ahead and keep working at it. And what I want you to understand through this whole three-week series is when he gave his life for you, he meant it. He didn't give it to you to get you jump-started on a life of working for him. He gave it to you so you could have a life that would be changed forever. And you could experience that for free. And I want you to understand what it means in Scripture. We talk about that. What happens when when we don't live for free? What happens when we don't understand that it is free? Here's the way we live our lives. One, we constantly feel like we're a failure because we never measure up. You don't have to raise your hands, but I know that some of you sitting in this room feel like that tonight. You know what? I never measure up to be good enough for God. I'm always a failure. I just want to quit this whole deal. I know that some of you came in here tonight knowing that you can never measure up. You don't feel like anybody loves you. You don't feel like anybody cares about you. You don't feel like anybody's going to do anything for you because you can't measure up. That's where you end up in that relationship. Next thing, you're always condemning of other people because they don't measure up with the standards you set for yourself. If you don't understand that salvation is a free gift, you will constantly condemn other people. Because you can look around this room right now, no matter how long you've been living for Jesus, or no matter if this is the first time you've ever been here, you can find somebody in here that you think is worse than you. Can't you? You know, don't point at them. But you can find somebody in here that you think, you know what, I ain't Christ or nothing. I'm not perfect, but I'm better than that guy. And if you set your standard according to what you're working for, you can always find somebody to condemn because of it. And what God says is that there is absolutely no condemnation left for people that love him. But we condemn each other because we don't understand that and we're not getting the job done there. Third thing, you have no joy in your life because you're always guilty. And I know one of the toughest things that I ever live with is when I commit a sin and I can't accept my own forgiveness. You know, because God forgives you like this, but we don't forgive ourselves like that all the time. And we live with this guilt and this junk that, carry, that we carry around in this huge pack full of crud on our back that beats us down forever because we cannot accept that Jesus has forgiven us. 
and that God has taken that sin away from us. We constantly live with that guilt which takes away our joy. And then you have end up with no desire to follow God because you know you're not going to get it right anyway. And it's pretty clear when you go to a workplace and every day you mess up and every day your boss beats you down and every day you're told you're terrible, you you're, have no common sense, you can't get the job done, you're going to get to a point where you don't want to go there anymore. Because you just don't want to hear how much of a failure you are. And you know what? When you live a life of, of works and you live a life of trying to work harder to get God to love you more, you're constantly in that boat because you will never measure up to his standard by your standard. You can't do that. I can't do that. Not a person in this room can do that. But the best news in the world that I can ever tell you is that you don't have to. Because God says that his, his love for you and his salvation for you is absolutely, positively free. And I want to read some verses to you. We'll close out pretty quickly. But in Romans chapter 3, verse 21 through 24 says this, But now a righteousness from God apart from the law has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. The word grace is the one thing in this world you have got to grab onto if you're ever going to understand that God gave himself for you for free. Because if you don't ever grab onto what grace is, then you're going to work at this thing for the rest of your life. And when you're 85 and 90, you're going to come back to me and say, I just couldn't do it. I'm sick of this whole thing. Because I've been working at it forever. And God never one time asked you to do that. Because you didn't understand what his grace was. Check out this passage in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. It says, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. Everything God gives to you is because of his grace. What is the definition of his grace? That is the only reason he deals with us. Because of his mercy and his grace for us. We don't deserve for him to love us. He loves us because he chooses to. He allows us into his presence because he wants to. That's his grace. Ephesians 1, 7 and 8 says this, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Anybody have a, an idea what the word lavished means? If you get lavished with water, how wet will you be? Soaking. But you know what? We live our lives according to the fact that, oh no, God only gave me enough grace for this part of my life and I've got to work really hard to make the rest of it okay. And God says to us, that's a lie from your enemy because I have covered you with my grace. Every sin that you've ever committed, every sin that you ever will commit, I can handle. Every sin that's ever been a part of your life, every lie, every cheating deal, every anything, every drug you've ever taken, everything you've ever been addicted to, every wrong you've ever done, I can handle it because of my grace. And I want you to understand tonight, if you came in this place addicted to something, hooked on something, torn up about something, your marriage is falling apart, your life is falling apart, job ain't working out, I don't know what it is, but God does, and his promise to you is he loves you just like you are. And he's got enough grace to cover who you are. He's got enough grace that he's not going to look at you and go, <clears throat> oh no, you're too bad. Rick said last week we're baptizing him. He said I should hold him under longer because he's had 50 years of sinning going on. But you know what? 50 years, 2 years, 100 years, God instantly can take it away because of his grace. That's exactly right. Instantly can take it away. 
And I want to show you what you got because of that. And, and I'll explain this. It says this in Matthew chapter 27, verse 50 and 51. Jesus is on the cross and it's his last breath. And it says, and when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. Verse 51 says, at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from, rock, from top to bottom. Let me explain what that means. The temple of God is where you could go to meet God, but you and I wouldn't be able to get in there. Because like it said earlier, only the priests, only the Levites could go in, and only after they had consecrated themselves. And when Jesus Christ climbed up on the cross and died for you, the instant that he died, that curtain was torn in half from the top to the bottom signifying that you and I can now meet with our Lord and Savior anytime, anywhere that we want to. That's the free gift that he gave you. It is not about how can I get up tomorrow morning and work for him and make him love me more. It is about how can I get up tomorrow morning and live for him because of how much he's given me. And if you're sitting here tonight and you've never accepted Jesus Christ and you, you're just checking it all out, I want you to understand from me. He's got enough grace to cover everything that's ever been in your life, everything that's ever been in your home, everything you've ever done, thought, felt, or said. He's got the grace to cover that. If you have a relationship with Christ, accept his grace for you. And stop living this, hey, I'm a Christian, but I'm working really hard at it because I know that I've got to do stuff. Give that up. Because here's a little encouragement, you ain't going to make it. You will not live your life in a way that pleases God without God living through you. It ain't possible. But accept that grace. Accept what God has given to you because he states that clearly so we will understand when he climbed up on that cross and died for us, he got rid of the curtain so that me and you could meet him face to face. Whether that's you tonight and you need to meet him, we'd love to talk to you about that. Whether you just need to, to understand that it's about him and not about you doing all the work. You want to talk to somebody about that, we'd love to talk to you. But for the next three weeks, next week we'll talk about his love, specifically how he loves you because of who he made you to be. Not because of what you're doing for him today. But make sure you're back next week so that we can walk through this deal of the free lunch. There really is such thing as a free lunch, but it ain't from this world. It ain't nothing this world's got to offer you that's free for you. But when God offers you his son, it costs you absolutely nothing because he wants you to follow him and trust him and he'll let you into his presence. Let me pray for us tonight and then I'll close this out. God, we love you. And I just trust you tonight that you have spoken your word and done what you wanted to do tonight, God. I want you to be glorified and honored only. I want you to be the only one lifted up. And I pray that tonight we can understand and learn that you truly do give us a relationship for free. And we must stop working at it. And we must accept it. I pray for those people in this room tonight that have never done that and they're looking at you and wondering and, and just checking the whole thing out. God, make yourself clear to them. For those people that are believers in this room and, and are just tired from trying to work at it. God, tired of feeling guilty. God, help them understand your grace. Help them grasp what that is. So you can love them with all your heart. Thanks for loving us like you do, God. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Guys, I want to tell you, if you need to talk to anybody at any point in time throughout the night, you can grab anybody with a gray name tag. They'll get you to somebody you need to talk to, and we would love to help you in any way dealing with those kinds of things. A couple things coming up. One, make sure on your way out you get one of these... Um, Hand out cards like this. It's got the picture of the car on the front. And um, what we have decided recently is that the number one way we get people to come to XL is when you invite them. We've run billboards. We've done chili cook-offs. We've done tacos in a bag. And it all took a lot of effort and a lot of energy and a lot of money. 
And there's nothing in this town that does anything to get people here like you saying, you need to come to this with me. So we're going to put all of our resources into Sunday night and making our Sunday night everything it needs to be, and we're just going to let you go get the people. How's that sound? Is that cool? On your way out tonight, there's literally thousands of these cards waiting on you because we want 1,000 people here December the 2nd trying to win this car because we're going to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. And if, if somebody gives their life to Christ that night, it's worth giving away a car, don't you think? Make sure you find your friends. Get them here in the next couple of weeks so that they can hear that God's love is free to them. Um, no, number two thing, um, if you ordered any of these T-shirts, the black and red ones with the XL on the front, it, we have a new room now off the coffee bar over here that's got the T-shirt set up in it. And it's, it's not really a new room because we didn't just build it, but it's a clean room. So you can go in there and get your T-shirts, and if you want to order one of those for our next order, go in there and tell them what you want, and they'll write that down, and we'll be ordering those soon. So you guys are the best in the world. Please have an incredibly awesome Thanksgiving. Eat as much as you can possibly eat, and watch as much football as you can watch, and we will see you next Sunday night right here at 6 o'clock. You're dismissed. Thanks, guys.